Hi everyone, I'm Jemima, and today I'm going to be talking to you about styling React components. This is the lightning talk, so we're going to move pew pew fast. <laughs> Basically, this talk is going to be one of those like BuzzFeed articles that's like, I tried out five different methods with styling with React, so you don't have to. Basically, when I first got started with styling and React components, I used to run into a bunch of like annoying errors, like you nest a component in another component, and then the style is getting overridden, or you have layout problems, you're trying to put a fixed component in a flex container, and it's not fitting in the flow, or you have to start figuring out how to be naming components and subcomponents and sub subcomponents, or you have to be real specific with how you target your elements. So basically, I had all these problems and I was looking for a styling method that was easy for me to use and learn because it was like, there was a switch from how you style in HTML to how you style in React, and that's something that was kind of similar for me. Something that would help me maintain file structure and code structure, something that was optimized because, of course, performance is important, and something that could be reused across multiple components, and it was scalable. So these are the methods I've tried out over you know, time. <laughs> Inline styling, CSS style sheets, and CSS and JS. So we're just going to go into each of them real quick and then just see what they are. So for inline styling, that's just your regular, regular putting the style method in like the element as an attribute. I use this mostly for overriding existing style rules because inline styling does have a very high specificity. And um, for passing in style properties as props, things like when you need to set a background image as a prop, really great for that. With the CSS style sheets, that's your CSS files, your CSS modules, and your preprocessors and Tailwind, Tailwind was, it was, I didn't know what that put as style sheets, but it wasn't really CSS and JS, so I just kept it here. I saw someone on Twitter call it CSS and HTML, which I think is very apt. <laughs> so yeah, this is how you just have your regular CSS files, and then you can use them for, I really like CSS files because they are very useful for putting the style sheets directly with the elements you're working on. So it's great for like co-locating and it's just easier to know where the changes you need to make are. Um, for handling global styling, you know, you can just pass in the global method, target all elements, and pass them to your app.js, and it's great. For nested styling, if you're using your preprocessors, you can kind of include like your style names in the global nest of the component name, and that really prevents that whole overriding error that I was running into earlier. So that's great. Tailwind, Tailwind is something I recently started working with, and the Maybe it's just me, personally, I didn't like it because it took me two days to figure out how to set it up, but I included it here for inclusivity's sake. Basically, Tailwind kind of works with utilities. Utilities are like, um, let's say, pre-existing class names that just have all these properties already, so you don't start defining them. So for example, like PY2 would be a padding top and bottom property of whatever you define the two to be, so that could be like one REM. Um, Tailwind is really good for if you have like a design system across your, let's say you work with a company that uses the same design system across multiple projects, you can just kind of define all those properties like your matting or your padding or your colors in your tailwind.config.js file and you can import that across multiple projects and it's great. CSS and JS. Uh, when I first heard about CSS and JS, I was like, CSS and JavaScript, that's ridiculous. And now I'm like, why isn't everything in JavaScript? This is the best thing ever. <laughs> So I've worked with um, style components and emotion. I haven't worked with JSS, but I just put it there because I thought the name was very apt because CSS and JS, JS. <laughs> style components are um, basically think of them as like template literals. You know, you have your CSS properties and you just pass them to template literals. So they are really great because they give you all the benefits of like inline styling, but also like CSS files because you have access to like your pseudo selectors, you have access to global styling, you can set like themed elements. It's just style components are just really useful. They're like really powerful when it comes to styling. And the same for emotion as well, like most CSS and JS libraries, but specifically style components. And another reason I love style components because they really help you with like accessibility. A lot of times you can just define the elements as using the semantic label, like the semantic element name, and it will render it semantically, which is great. <laughs> Another really cool thing about style component is this thing called polymorphism, which is just like a fancy way of saying making one element look like another element. For example, here I have a style div element and I have a style button element. I am passing in the button element to my prop. What is going to happen is that my element, the style div element, is actually going to render as a button element. This is really useful for when you have, let's say, you have links and buttons that need to have the same styling, but you don't want to start like overriding all the button styling like all the buttons default styling, you can just be like passing style on button as link or passing link as style button. And then the link render as a button or the button render as a link, depending on how you need it to work. 
this is like a little chart I came up with from my experience and my preferences. It's not like saying this is the one method that is better than this. It's just like how I found them. Um, from this chart, I would say my favorite method is definitely style components, just that it was a bit hard for me to um, pick up. You know, there is a bit of a learning curve and it's not very easy to set up. You know, you have to install a lot of things. Tailwind was my least favorite, not because it's bad, just because I just could not get my head around it. I could not figure out how to set it up. I could not figure out how to use it. I had to, like literally to date, if I'm using Tailwind, I have to Google whatever property I am trying to define. I just do not know these things offhand. But yeah, I think it's still a fine framework if that's what you're into. Of course, each of these methods are suited to a particular kind of you know, it, it's kind of suited to what your project needs. You know, if you're doing like a large scale project, you might want to use like a style component or a CSS file because you can um, attach multiple files that way. If you're doing something small scale, you could stick to like Tailwind, for example, because that way you don't need to start thinking of class names and stuff. You can just pass in the utilities. So, you know, it all depends on what you prefer. So yeah, that's about it. Like I said, let me talk pew pew real quick. I do have slides for this. These are the slides to the original version of this talk, which is much longer and those include a more specific points for each styling method. You can see it on my website, jemimaapu.com slash slides slash styling hyphen react. You can just check it out there. I also included some links for more um, react styling methods you can read up on. They are really good, really useful. You can check them out there. And yeah, that's about it for me. Thank you so much for listening. If you do have any questions, I think there's going to be a like a Q and A with the MC after this, or um, I think there's an advice lounge. Either way, you could just like reach out to me there, or you could um, fill out the contact form on my site, jemaimabu.com, or send me a message on Twitter or LinkedIn. You can find me online everywhere at jemaimabu. Thank you for listening, and have a pleasant rest of the talk. Bye.